All right, guys, we're back here with Robert in Yakima, Washington. At the exact same spot, we did the very first interview right here, except for he was sitting down right there. <laughs> but yeah, how have you been, Robert? I've been hanging in there. Um, the other day I came over here and I asked about you to a couple guys, and they said that uh, that you had overdosed recently or something like that. No. You haven't overdosed? No. That's good. That's good. I have in the past, but not in the past few weeks. They no. might have been talking about somebody else. Yeah, there's another Robert stays down here. Yeah, that's probably what it was. My bad. I, I thought they were talking about you, you know? Um, so what have you been up to since the last time we spoke? <clears throat> well, I've been trying to get things back going in the right direction. Um, I'm fixing to be going in a program at the mission. To go into a what program? Uh, the discovery program. And what is that for? It's a year and three quarters long. It's to basically better your life, you know, every aspect of it. They help you out with, you know, getting your IDs and, you know, anything that you need. Is that the same program that you had told me about before that you had tried doing to, uh, to detox? Or is that something completely different? That's something completely different. Yeah? yeah detox is a whole other area. So does this also uh, have detox in it or no? No. No? Now, the first two weeks, you, you kind of acclimate yourself to the program, and the program watches you to see if you're right fit and everything, and then after that, you move to the next phase. Oh, okay. What's the next phase? Uh, you start going to classes and uh, learning about stuff and learn about yourself and, and you do, do whatever they ask. From the last time that we spoke, has any family or friends come up to check up on you? Uh, no. My, I check up on my family. They, I have to call my ex at least three times a week or she's calling the National Guard out because she knows what kind of damage I can cause. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh, she cares wow. about me too, so. That's good. Yeah, I um, call her at least three times a week. What, what kind of dangers have you faced out here from the last time we spoke? Well, I've been jumped a couple times. Uh, been robbed. Um, that's about it. Being hungry. Um, why have you been jumped? What happened? Drunk guys. Just see me an easy target. And so they try stealing whatever you have, right? Yeah. Um, have you been doing the blues or, or fentanyl? I mean, uh, I've been trying, or anything like that? I have, but not that much because I've been trying to get off of them because of the program. And I've got like two days of clean off of them. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. What was the last thing you did? Uh, methamphetamines. Meth? Yeah. Um, that was just to stay awake. It? What's that? That was just to stay awake so I could watch my stuff. Every, sure. time, every time you go to sleep, your stuff gets taken. Oh, yeah. No, I've, I've gone to do interviews several times when people, when I go up to them, they're in the middle of stealing from somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. But I try keeping that to myself because I don't want no, no, nothing bad, you know what I mean? Um, we, we try to keep it all positive in this channel, you know, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, so, so your short-term goal, pretty much, is to go to this discovery program. Yeah. That's first things good. first is to get clean off everything. That's I still, good. I still do the meth every now and then because it's just, I like it, you know. But it's something. What I gotta, is it that you like about it, Robert? Uh, I can watch my stuff. One thing. Yeah. And uh, other things just it gets me around people because I, I stay by myself mostly. Yeah. Because uh, me and people don't get along. Because they, they don't like, I guess, they like picking fun at some of the things I do, like my art and my poetry and my music, and I dance, and sometimes I sing, which I pretty much suck at it, but, you know, I like to have fun, and they think that's funny, so. Wow. Yeah. So you think it's better to be alone for the most part, huh? Yeah. Hey, for so me it is. Not For anybody else, I don't know, but for yeah, me it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um... So the first interview we did, you were actually with Eric. Where's Eric at? I haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, he's down that way somewhere. Yeah? He should be by the coffee shop. But he's still alive. Huh? Yeah, he's, he's still, still alive. I got to yeah. ask that because you know how many people are passing away right now, Robert? Yeah, we've had a couple of people do since then. Yeah. Quite a few. How many? Who has passed away recently within the homeless community? Uh, I don't know their names, but oh. yeah, I can't remember people's names. If I meet them, I give them a nickname so I can remember them. Oh, okay, okay. Um, that, that way, if people ask me your name, I really don't know your name, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, and, and like people say, it's better not to be, you know, saying other people's yeah, names, right? Yeah, you can get in a lot of trouble dropping names. Yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been told that before, too. Um, so, yeah, Robert, uh, I was going to ask you something that went away from me. <coughs> 
schizophrenia. Yeah. You, you talk about that you, that, that you struggle, you go through schizophrenia and other things. Have you been getting your medication for it? I have, but then it's taken. What's that? They take my pills. Who takes it? Whoever steals all my stuff. Oh, back, really? Your backpacks go first. That's the first thing they hit. Is, is that a con is, Do people out in the streets usually use that medication to get high? Uh, some of it they do, some of it they don't. Oh. So some of it is just having to be there at the time they steal your stuff, so it's it's gone with it. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, how have you been doing with the schizophrenia? And I think you said that you have bipolar. Yeah. Right? How have you been doing with that stuff? Um, well, the schizophrenia, it's more or less schizoaffective disorder. I have this, the milder form of schizophrenia. I still suffer from auditory hallucinations and suicide ideation and stuff like that, but... Uh, I haven't had my meds in about a, two weeks. It's getting, it gets rough sometimes. For sure. But Especially times, when you don't get sleep, right? I would yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, it messes with it too. But I've learned, as far as the auditory hallucinations, I learned to know which parts my schizo effect and which part ain't when the voice is in my head. For you sure. Know, I've had voices in my head for a long time. And so, would you mind me asking you to go into a little bit of detail about what, what it is that you hear or the challenges that you face? Uh, well, it, it say like if somebody makes me mad, the voices are start telling me to do something to them. Uh huh. And they get pretty graphic as far as what it says. And is it your own voice that you hear, or no. like someone else's? It's voice? someone else's voice. Oh, really? Yeah, and there's two or three of them. There's not just one. And has it always been those two or three voices throughout your whole uh, experience with that? Yeah, sometimes they change into either a deeper voice or a lighter voice. And sometimes it changes. But it's voices that you recognize that, that have been the yeah. three uh, same voices throughout your whole yeah. life? And when did you begin with that, Robert, for people that haven't seen um, your earlier videos? I first started noticing them whenever I was uh, 17. 17 years old. I started re realizing that I got voices in my head. Yeah. You know, at first I just thought it was just, you know, your, your brain's going to tell you things all the time. But uh, I first realized that they were really, truly voices whenever I was about 17, almost 18. Yeah. And what did your parents do to help you when, when you were 17 with that? Nothing. What did they say to you about it? Would you being stupid? Really? Yeah, you know, you're just being childish. You go away. Do you feel like it's just they didn't understand how to help or that they didn't understand what you were going through? No, they were busy with their own lives. With their own stuff? Yeah. My, my stepmom, she didn't care. And then my dad, he was he was always gone because he was a truck driver. Oh. Okay. He was in maybe once or twice in six months. And is this, are these voices, do you hear them every single day or mm -hmm. it, can it go a week without happening? Yeah. or? It's an everyday thing. So you, you're having to battle it and, mm -hmm. and fight it every day. Huh? Yeah. That's why. I, that's why. where my music and my art and stuff come in because the music. That helps. I, you. I blast my music so loud where I don't hear the voices. It drowns oh. them out. And then, um, my my art, I do that to to focus my mind on something else than the voices. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'll have to tell them to shut up or something like that and then they'll quiet down a little bit but they, they never truly go away really they're always in the back of your mind so when you're sleeping robert do, do they, does that wake you up uh no, no. when i'm sleeping I, i'm pretty hard sleeper so yeah. when you sleep those voices are like they're gone no, they're i have night bothering. terrors night, what's that i have night terrors night terrors yeah and if, if you don't mind talking about it what, what does that mean uh like stuff that's happened to you in the past it'll come back and it'll It'll make it like three or four times worse. Oh, mm -hmm. kind of like PTSD. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Well, I'm, I'm sorry makes, that you go makes through it, that. It makes it hard sometimes, but after a while, you learn how to deal with it, how to take something and use it against that, so that you don't let it. And can you go to into example? How do you do that? What do you do? Well, if the voices get really bad, I'll turn, or my music stays on. The music, right? You, if, yeah. if I ain't talking to nobody, my music's on. Just like now, I got headphones on and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. And it's like, I'm constantly having to charge something because I need the music because it drowns out the voices. And it's, sometimes it does get hard because they get pretty graphic in what they say. And sometimes I have to uh, do something. I don't know what... It depends on the moment and the time, what's going on, to whether yeah. I, what I have to do as far as the, the severity of it. Yeah. 
and uh, so pretty much the, the way that you handle it is by listening to music is there anything else that, that you do to try to handle it make it cope with it and the reason that I ask Robert is for people that are going through a singular struggle for advice for them right well I don't know if it works for them or not but I use my poetry and my art poetry I put all the things that they say I put it into words Poetry, art, music. music, and anything that helps get your mind off, like building models, uh, something to do with your hands. If you can get your hands doing something and your mind occupied on something else, you're not focused on those. It's all about what you're willing to do is to, to stop the issue. For sure. Now, you don't want to just go out and start chopping people up. Man. That's one thing you don't want to do. I mean, right. they, is that they, what the voices tell you? Oh, they get, they get more graphic than that. I mean, they get real down and dirty. Yeah. Yeah, they don't mess around. And there's, uh, my ex says I have three different personalities. Oh, okay. Which I know one's true because he only comes out when I'm drinking. That's why really? I quit drinking 16 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't had a drink in 16 years. Wow. A little over 16, but I stopped counting after a while. Yeah, his so, name is Chucky. When he so comes what? out, he, he starts talking shit. He likes talking shit to people. Your personality? Yeah. The last time he came out, a woman hit me three times before I hit the ground. Really? He said something to her that really made her mad. And does, does that personality have a name? It's Chucky. Chucky. That's what my ex calls him. She's, she's met him a couple times. Really? Yeah, I check out and he checks in. When he checks in, it's a no whole barred situation. So, Robert, in no means am I, am I, am I meaning to make uh, light of the situation that we're discussing, but you're kind of reminding me of the movie um, Jim Carrey. What is that movie, Liar, Liar? Yeah, Liar, Liar. I don't think it's Liar, Liar. It's, it's one of his movies where he has a split personality disorder. And you're kind of, the way you're talking, that, that's reminding me of that. Cable guy, maybe? No, it's not the cable guy. Even though I think he might struggle with that in that movie. He struggles with something in that movie. Yeah, he definitely does. <laughs> oh, I can't remember the, what the movie's called, but he's got three black sons and stuff like that. And, I haven't uh, seen that one. No, it's a good movie. And he kind of, it seems like he, yeah, I remember he was a... Uh, he was a police officer for uh, Rhode Island. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can't remember what the movie's called right now. I just seen it a couple weeks ago. Um, but yeah, Robert, I, I appreciate you going into depth about that because it's really important, you know, for people that, that are going through a struggle similar to you, that they, that they you know, that it helps them. You know what I mean? Yeah, not everybody's going to be open to, to help people no. in our situations. But you need to find somebody that you can confide into, somebody that you trust, which is, nowadays it's really hard to find people you can trust. For sure. Because they may say you can trust them, but you can't. Yep. So you need to find somebody that truly you can trust to confide in, to let them know what's going on, so that you can go have somebody to talk to when you need it. So Robert, let me ask you this. Whenever you have done or taken your medication for the schizophrenia, right? Does it eliminate the voices? While no, you're it doesn't. It doesn't eliminate. It doesn't stop the problem. It just, it calms it down. Yeah. And makes it where it's not as loud, and they're not as graphic because they're not there a lot. Oh, okay. But, but not completely. Yeah, it's not. It's never completely gone. That's why they have certain other things like journaling, poetry, art, uh, yeah. writing a novel or some shit. For sure. Anything you can do to occupy your mind on something else. Robert, um, what message do you have for family or friends if they end up seeing this video? Listen to what they got to say. You know, get them the help they need because if they if you truly love them and you truly mean what you say, help them. Don't just turn your back on them. Don't just walk away from them because that's that that's what kills them the most when your family turns away. Robert, would you be okay with doing a follow-up interview in the future? Yeah. And would you be okay with me posting this on my YouTube channel? I don't mind. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. You're welcome.